Hey there, everybody. Cindy Daychuck here with Queen Bee Creations. We are going to be tackling this big old farmhouse window. This is about 100 years old. Um, it's in, as you would expect, rough shape. It needs a ton of sanding. And the person that gifted this to me has already done a bunch of sanding. But, um, you know, these things take work. And here's, here's the thing. I often get people popping into the shop saying, hey, I saw some of the windows that you've done. I love the look of that. Do you have any old windows here? And I'll say, yes, but, and then I show them <laughs> what they look like. And they have got layers and layers and layers of paint on them. They are dusty, they're dirty, they're cracking, they're, and they look and they go, uh, don't you have any that look better than that? No, that's what they look like. <laughs> they look good after I've spent hours doing it. They don't want to pay the price of what it costs to buy them once I've refinished them because of the hours of work I've put into it, but they don't want to put the hours of work into it. You know, it's that dilemma. So I love the look of them, but they are work. The other thing about this, I mean, I've got, I've got this sander out. I've got my heavy duty sander out. I have my scraper tool. I've got sanding pads and sandpaper beside me. And I have a mask. Odds are this has got lead paint on it. Um, I don't know for sure. I don't have the testing strips, but I'm pretty comfortable in believing that it does, in which case I am going to be wearing a mask, which makes it a little bit hot, a little bit more uncomfortable, and uh, a little less fun. But hey, that's the way these things go. So I am going to be spending some time. I don't think all of this black gook is going to come off. Um, so I'm not going to sweat it. I am going to do both sides, get off as much as I can, but I'm not going to agonize over having to get off all of it because I think of that as kind of like patina. That's some of the aging of it. And uh, so I'm going to go with it. I just want to get off the crud. <laughs> I just want to get off the gunk that's on it and just make it look a little nicer before I start treating it. So... Um, sometimes as well, a lot of this, you know, the, the, the glazing, is it the glazing that hold? No, the, I don't know. Whatever you call the stuff that holds the glass in there. Is that glazing? I don't know. I don't know. Put it in the comments. Um, but if, if that's all chipping away and you're going to fall out, um, then I will, add some new stuff in, some caulking in there to hold those panes in. These are the old original panes, so I want to keep them. I haven't cleaned any of them yet because there's not too much point till I'm done on my, my sanding. Um, and uh, I need them all nice and shiny and clean to do the next part. But hey, I'm going to do the noisy, stinky, smelly, dusty part um, without you because really, you know what sanding looks like. It's dirty, it's messy, and hey, it's the way it goes. So, off I go. Okay, we're back to our window. Couple of things, it looks so different. I showed you the back last time, so just um, so that you know, it still looks a little bit sketchy, but it's the back, so I'm not wasting tons of time. It's cleaned up. The excess paint has been removed. Um, glass panels have been cleaned four times. Now, I took my scraper to the windows. I went around with the little X-Acto knife, got off as much stuff as possible. I've left a lot of, there's a green paint, you can kind of see in here, that was layered up in there. I'm good with that, I like that look. My customer that had given me this had actually done a lot of the stripping on here and removed a bunch of the paint. I don't want to take it down to all raw wood. Then it looks like a new window and you lose sort of the beauty of it. So um, I've got a lot of the, the wood 
um, some of the paint, you know, here on the bottom. Still, if it wasn't chipping off, I just sanded it smooth, and I love that look. A couple of things about this too. You can probably notice that that top edge up there is about four inches. This bottom one is about one inch. So as much as you might think of leaving, making that the bottom because it looks heavier, it's the better option for attaching all the hanging hardware on the back. For something like this, because it's gonna be very big and it's gonna be very heavy, I am personally not going to be attaching any hanging hardware to it. I will leave that decision and choice to whatever customer purchases this. My preference would be off Amazon to get a long French cleat, but not everybody understands how to use those. Um, and again, depending upon their studs and what where they wanna place it, it's really gonna drive what kind of hardware they need to put on the back. So I'm gonna leave that for them. What I do want to do before we do um, any of the decorative elements is to seal all of this wood up. I don't want to paint it dark. It kind of negates some of the, the, the lightning. And I don't necessarily want to cover up all of the, the paint and the layers of paint. This is kind of white and green that have been exposed because I like that. Um, so before I do anything else, I want to get this sealed up. What I do have is stain and finishing oil by Fusion. This is in the color white. And with any of these products, any of the um, finishing oils or stains, you want to stir them rather than shaking. You don't want to add air bubbles and you want to keep stirring until when you pull your stick out, you don't see a thick, um, kind of thick, thick blobs on the end of your stick. That's a lot of the pigment that settles. You want to be able to mix that up in. So with this, because I've got some, some, exposed wood, it's gonna seal everything up, but it's also gonna to serve to stain this. So I'm gonna get kind of a, um, a white coating on this. What I will be doing is applying this everywhere, and after about 15, 20 minutes, I will go in with a dry, lint-free cloth, and I will wipe it back. So I will get some of that wood exposed. I know it looks really solid white right now, but I will actually get some of that natural wood exposed and it's going to help um, seal and protect that wood, but it's also going to seal over any of that exposed paint or some of those rough joins or anything else. So I'm going to get this painted out let it sit and then wipe it back. I'm gonna leave it overnight to dry before I do anything else. And I will make a determination then as to whether or not I wanna put another coat on. So you could do multiple layers to be able to get the, le the level of um, translucency or opacity that you would want. So more layers of this is gonna make it look whiter fewer layers, it's gonna be a little bit, um, a little bit more translucent. So I'm gonna get this done and uh, start with the sitting, sitting part, <laughs> the letting it dry part. And uh, we'll see if I, if I like how it looks or if I feel it needs more. I've got you down on a slightly weird angle here, but that's so that you can see what I'm doing. I am actually gonna be applying a transfer. This is the new Elysium transfer. I have been waiting for this to arrive um, specifically for this project. And it is a set of four sheets. I am looking at possibly doing, and this is where I have to see, they don't come up as high as I would like. So I am going to be using most of, most of this transfer. 
because I don't want these two down here and then these two just to be able to fill this in. So luckily these have grid lines on them so that I'm able to kind of cut nice and straight in here. So if I'm cutting across this one, right in here, then it's gonna give me a good idea of exactly where I need to cut the other one. Now, additionally with these, let me just cut off, there's a little band here that I don't want, which is where I'm gonna match up with the other side. And I will just save these pieces for another project. Because they're going to be a really nice uh, border or top to two things. So I'll hang on to those. And this one, make sure I do it the right way around. All right, so I want to get these roughly centered. They are going to not go, I'm not going to do them on the ridges. So I'm going to cut these down to here. It's all about just working on the layout, right? So this is going to fit down in there. And then this one is going to fit down over top. Right in there. Two a little bit past. All right, so I want to lay this one down first because the other one is going to kind of overlap over the top. And here's where you get to kind of spiff this up. Now, you get the little plastic tool and all that we're going to do Check and make sure I actually did it the right way around. Don't want it upside down. Now the transfers really like a slick surface, so they're really going to enjoy going on to the glass, even though it's very old glass. And there we go. Now I will take and I'll typically do this after I've got them all, but I will take a piece of plastic and just kind of burnish that in. The next one, I am going to take and just kind of match it up to my grid lines so that it all fits in there perfect. And if you slowly lift that backing paper up, it as well gives you an idea of where you may have missed transferring a bit of the paper. Awesome. All right. So then I'm just going to do exactly the same thing, continuing that pattern across the page right across the glass, sorry, as though it didn't uh, let up, even though we had that, that bar in the way. And then I will do exactly the same thing, moving upward the panel. And here I'm gonna have to be matching up downward and cutting off here and here, having a little bit going above. 
but it's just, you know, keep yourself organized, go nice and slow, and uh, it's not a big issue. This is our window, and I did decide that uh, I wanted to brighten up the window a little bit, the wood, but nothing major. So what I do have is white linen, all-in-one paint by DIY, so in the white linen cottage colors. I have a very chunky, old, dried up um, brush. I'm just dipping lightly, and then I am actually offloading, okay? And I am just going to go straight across. So I don't want big streaks. I don't want tons of white on there. I just really want to drag the brush back and forth, um, creating a little bit of that brighter white over top of that white that we've already laid down. So just slight, just to create that weathered wood look, okay? So I'm not doing anything major, and you notice this is still a dry, dry brush for these cross slats. It's just a little bit of brightness. It's nothing huge, but just lightly dragging, you just create sort of little highlights more than anything else. And then that, that weathered white from our finishing product just over top. Yep, that's all it needed. Okay, I'm gonna carry on and then this one's done. This is our finished window. I propped it up here because I thought with the white background you'd be able to see it a little bit better. That little dry brushing of the white just kind of made the white pop a little bit more. I didn't want it to overpower, but I wanted it to kind of blend in with some of our florals a little bit. I love the softness of this Elysium transfer. Nothing is super bold. It's gonna work in a lot of different decors and styles. And I just, I, I love the look of these transfers, looking like you're looking out through a window into a big flower garden. Um, not difficult to do. I mean, you can do the same treatment with, you know, with, with any pained, pained and framed product. I mean, you could, you could take an old picture frame with the glass still in, do the same thing. You could take an old window pane. You could take a glass fronted door front um, from, from a cabinet and, and do this kind of treatment. So something that, that's really easy, a little bit of paint that's gonna complement the final um, transfer that you're using, being able to do something like this. I mean, what a treat on an old 100 year old window frame. So thank you, Betty Ann, for the gift. This is the finished product. You're lovely, honey. Thank you guys for tuning in. Let me know if you have any questions. Certainly, if you're going to give this a try and uh, you just need a little bit more info, more than happy to help out. And uh, as always, thanks for tuning in. Looking to see you on the next one. Until then, take care. <laughs>